what's going on fam we are back for another part of dead by daylight we are going over the a uh, binding of ken chapter uh we're gonna be covering the twins we're gonna be covering the survivor as well uh but for this first part we're gonna be covering the twins the killer uh so let's go ahead and get right into this fam here we go uh this is the twins uh this is what uh i guess she uh looks like and uh let's 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 go ahead and uh let's go ahead and get into it here fam um and yeah just a little tidbit on the other series uh, on the other uh on on uh um the all kill uh chapter um i will be including gameplay uh, i will be including including gameplay uh let me know uh, if that's something you want to see and uh we'll we'll, we'll uh we'll include some uh, uh gameplay of just uh, a few matches have just um, just focused uh, solely on um, solely on those uh, those killers, uh, those killers and survivors. Uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get into it, fam. Here we go, the twins. All right, uh, here we have the perks. We have hoarder, uh, teachable twins perk. Uh, unlocking this perk makes it available in the blood web of all killers you protect what little you have and are attentive to any disturbance of your stockpiles survivors reveal their location when they interact with a chest or when they pick up an item within 32 meters of your location the trial begins with up to two additional chests in the environment may be unlocked in the blood web of the twins from level 30 plus or in the shrine of secrets all right the next perk is uh, oppression again this is a teachable perk for the twins unlocking this perk makes it available in the blood web of all killers life has been difficult for you you will you will make it difficult for others when you damage a generator up to three other random generators also begin regressing if the affected generators are being repaired any survivors repairing the repairing them receive a difficult skill check Oof. oppression has a cooldown of 120 seconds damn them as they would damn us charlotte dishes that's how you say that there all right, may be unlocked in the blood web of the twins from level 35 or in the shrine of secrets. All right, moving on here. Coup de gras. I think that's how you pronounce that. All right, here we go. Unlocking this perk again makes it available in the blood web of all killers as the. That's all, folks. Uh, as the end nears, you will go in for the kill. Each time a generator is completed, coup de gras grows in power. I think that's how you say it, pretty sure. Gain a token. Consume one token to increase the distance of your next lunge attack by 40%. May be unlocked in the blood web of the twins from level 40 or in the Shrine of Secrets. All right, so for the twins, a very hard uh, killer to play. Um, we got the attributes 4.6 the max base speed at 4.6 meters per second per second per second uh, Base terror radius is 32 meters so they can uh, so this the killer can scare the shit out of you and uh, Very tall very tall. Yes, very tall. All right, let's go in and get into it dead by daylight a binding of kin chapter the backstory on the twins Here we go fam a pair of conjoined twins Charlotte and Victor Deshaies formed an emotional bond like none, like none other. The unlikeliness of their successful birth in the 17th century could be described as miraculous, yet it immediately brought about their life of persecution. The twins emerged with Victor's lower body affixed into the chest of his sister. Legs twisted around their muscles and organs. He was smaller than Charlotte, grown as if he were an appendage of her body rather than a fully formed boy. As the newborn screeched, so too did the midwife who delivered them. Running from the home, yelling a demon birthed by a witch. So began the hunting of Charlotte, Victor, and their mother, Madeline. 
The coming years were fleeting memories for the twins, yet they were the closest thing to a normal life they would know. The journey with their mother was what they believed all children underwent. The games of running and hiding through France's countryside being an ordinary occurrence. At the age of five, a new challenge to the game was presented as her mother fell ill. Pale and exhausted, Madeline had no choice but to pass responsibility of collecting food onto Charlotte. The girl, burdened under extra clothing that concealed Victor's protruding body, set out from the forest tent and marched to the nearby town. Though a peculiar sight, she did what she had been trained for, waiting for an opening at the market and swiping whatever food she could. It was Victor in the game, but one short lived. After midnight, glowing flames surrounded the family's encampment, encampment, bobbing through the darkness. A single commanding shout broke the night's silence and a mob of witch hunters streamed in. Grubby hands tore the twins from their bed, Charlotte frantically, frantically kicking all who approached. Madeline cried for her children, her voice abruptly silenced by a club to her skull. Victor shrieked the wailings of a trapped rat. The hunters coordinated quickly. A judge on hand declared Madeline guilty of witchcraft, evidenced by her demon spawn. Within minutes, they shackled her unconscious body to a tree, surrounding her feet with dry twigs and moss. As she awoke, she did not struggle. One begged her children to turn away. Only begged her children to turn away. They would be given no choice. The twins were forced to watch as the torch was lit and they watched as the flames leapt up their mother's skirt, charring and sizzling her flesh. They watched as fat dripped from her body and her face bubbled and twisted. They watched until the screams that tore her vocal cords were no more. And that what was left of was the crackling of embers and a nauseating stench. Whatever joy and goodness were in them died with their mother. Caged and transported to an old wooden temple, they were sold to a secretive group clad in dark cloaks. Victor reacted with the ferocity of a rabid beast at anyone who approached, clawing and biting. The only solace that could calm him was the embrace of his sister. Charlotte, bitter and hateful to all but her brother, found purpose in being his protector. Within the temple, they were, they were exposed to unusual experiments for years, some cruel, many simply baffling. One day, they would be made to break the neck of a small gray bird. The next, they would bleed their fingers into a vase of roses. Every seventh day, they would sleep with the branch of a damp oak beneath their pillow. Then there was chanting, a never-ending chorus from cloaked figures on scheduled intervals. In time, a final experiment was planned. Two robed figures herded the twins into the center of the temple, holding Charlotte upon an altar in a room lit with candelabras. The wrinkled face of a man peered from under his hood, placing a hand on his on the forehead of each twin, making careful examination of their skulls. Memento mori, he uttered, as he withdrew a shining blade. Charlotte rolled to her side, shifting her brother off the altar with a screech, the screech his arm is far as he would he stretched his arm as far as he could knocking a candelabra to the ground the flames took the dry wood immediately they swept over the floor igniting the black robes that crushed against it screams of agony pierced the chaos invigorating charlotte 
She dashed through the inferno vision concealed with nothing but black smoke and blazing flame. A painful heaviness filled her lungs. No, it couldn't be found every step leading to overwhelming heat. She fell to her knees, suffocating, and then saw it. Sunlight, trees. She stumbled from the fire into the dewy grass without looking back. She ran into the forest until she collapsed. When Charlotte opened her eyes, she reached for Victor's hand. He had made no attempt to budge. His body hung helplessly from her torso. The... She clasped his face, stared, and into his sad, still eyes. The movements she was accustomed to, his body pulling at her skin, as legs prodding at the activity went well. Prodding at the cavity in her chest were no more. Victor was dead. Charlotte had no choice but to continue moving as she mourned, fearing black cloaks and witch hunters were prowling. The concealed, she concealed her brother's corpse under, the, under her clothing and marched for the sewers of a nearby city. There she set up camp, emerging often to steal whatever food she could, resorting from, to raiding barns from, from pig shop big slop when depression set in throughout the years Victor's corpse rotted as the limbs oozed and blackened yet his body demonstrated resistance to complete decomposition as if his sister's blood still coursed through him protecting his lifeless body became Charlotte's sole reason for being refusing to ever be separated from the only family she had left. Life in her teenage years was a game of survival. Her hatred for humanity grew each day under the realization they would never leave her be, no matter how many died during her botched robberies and desperate attempts to escape. There would always be more to pursue and sling words of condemnation at her monster, demon, witch. And it was the Black Cloaks who were the worst of them. Their hunt for her was unending, forcing her to constantly abandon shelter and run. Four years, Charlotte filled, drawing blood out of necessity cradling her long dead brother in the night during a frigid winter her body began to break down food was scarce and the refuge of the rickety shacks were no use against freezing temperatures Sickle in hand, she sheltered near her campfire in the woods, not knowing if the black cloaks would take her before the cold did. As for, as frost crystallized around her nostrils and her lips took on a gentle blue hue, Charlotte felt something she had never experienced, acceptance. She closed her eyes, opening herself to the serenity of death. When a shriek, shrill and vicious pierced her eyes her ears everything whatever let's go victor spasmed and flailed from her chest a cloud a fog encompassing him before he could react he spilled from her in a bloody puddle landing on the snow and running Pulling herself from the edge of death, she gave chase, calling his name. She ran through the forest until her legs could hardly carry her, until finally, within her view, was Victor sitting on, sitting at the edge of a thick fog. His face twisted and feral, screamed as a dark-hooded figure emerged from the fog, grabbed his arm, and seized him. 
the serenity that had kept crept into Charlotte was extinguished, replaced with the seething hatred and rage she had depended on for so long. With a tight grip on her sickle, she charged into the fog, prepared to devastate, to evacerate anyone who set foot near her brother. And that fam is the twins from a binding of kin chapter. I hope you appreciated that as much as I did. I love doing these. I love doing this. I love doing, I love creating content. So if you like somebody and love somebody that creates content, be sure to hit that follow button, tickle it, love it, smash it, do whatever you got to do, but hit that subscribe button and we shall see each and every one of you in the next VOD. Don't forget, fam, I do stream on Twitch. The link is in my about section. Please go check out Twitch. Go check out my website. That is where everything is at. Please check out my website. The link is in the bio. The link is in the bio. Please go check out my other social media as well, as I do try to post fairly consistent content to all social media and content creation platforms. So again, thank you for everyone supporting the content, watching the VODs, kicking ace and taking some names. And again, I love you fam. Stay safe out there. And we shall see you all in the next part or VOD. Until then fam, peace.